Have you ever heard of function notation? I like saying that. Function notation. It's kind of cool. Well, function notation, believe it or not, equals, get it, equals an equation. It's the same thing. It's a little bit easier to write a function notation uh, when substituting numbers. If I had the equation, if I had the equation y equals 3x plus 5, I can write that same equation as a function notation. And I'd write, it's called f of x equals 3x plus 5. I want you to pay close attention to something. Notice that instead of writing my y, I wrote f of x. It's the same exact thing. You'll notice in math we rename things over and over and over again, but it's the same exact thing. I swear. The whole point of function notation, the whole reason behind it is because, see that x in, inside the parentheses? They tell you that's what they want you to substitute in for x. So my function of negative 2 would be 3 times negative 2 plus 5. And then you saw 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 plus 5, and negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. So the function of negative 2 equals negative 1. And that's all you're doing. You're going back to your basics. You're going back to your basics of add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and substituting. Okay? You're replacing. And whatever's inside that parentheses tells you what to plug in for x. Now, sometimes they don't want you to plug in for x. And this is when it can get a little tricky. What if they said... f of 1 plus 4 and your function notation is f of x equals 2x plus 5. Well, what I say? I said that anything inside these parentheses, they want you to plug in for x. So that's exactly what you're going to do. But you're going to put all of this in brackets first. The reason you're going to put this in brackets is because this goes on the outside because it's not inside the parentheses. So I'm going to rewrite my problem as 2 substituting with 1 plus 5, and then I have my plus 4. So 2 times 1 using order of operations is 2 plus 5 plus 4, and 2 plus 5 is 7, plus 4 is 11. Sometimes they do this with... Um, formulas. Let's take, for example, the formula of H of T, meaning whatever's inside these parentheses, they want you to substitute in for T. And the formula is negative 16 T squared plus 68t plus 2. And they say, okay, what if, that write my h, what if, hello, h of 4 equals negative 16t squared plus 68t plus 4. And once again, you say, okay, I take my t, and I plug in anywhere I see a t, I'm going to plug in a 4. 
So I have negative 16, 4 squared plus 68, there's a t, times 4 plus 4. And I have negative 16, 4 squared means 4 times 4, or 16 plus 68 times 4 plus 4. I have to pull my calculator up for this one. Notice I just use a basic calculator. Okay, so 16 times 16 is 256, and that's a negative because a negative times a positive is a negative. 256 plus 68. 68 times 4 is 272. So 272 plus 4. I can go ahead left to right. Negative 256 and a positive 272 and a plus 4. Plug it into your calculator or you can do it out. And that gives you, eventually, it will give you 18. So h of 4 is 18. Using the same problem, I'm going to do, I'm going to try and trick you. What if I said two open brackets h of g close brackets? You say, wait a second, there's no g. Well, what this means is anywhere I see a g, anywhere I see a t, I'm going to put a g because I'm using the same formula. Negative 16t squared plus 68t plus 2. I'm going to rewrite the problem. Negative 16 instead of writing a t, what am I going to write? A g. Just go along with it. There you go. Okay, so you got that done. So you got this part here done. Anywhere I see a G, I put it. Anywhere I see a T, I put a G. What's about this out here? This means you take all of this and you times it by two. And that's why the brackets are there. So now I have to use the distributive property. Two times negative 16 is a negative 32g squared plus 2 times 68 is 136g and 2 times 2 is 4. And ladies and gentlemen, guess what? You're done. The reason you're done is because you cannot simplify it anymore. You have a g squared. Do you have any other g squareds? Nope. You have a g. Do you have any other g's? Nope. And you have your number four. Do you have any other numbers without variables? Nope. And that's how you know you're done. We're going to take a look at another one. Here's the original problem. If f of t equals 2t cubed, First thing I want you to do is find f of 4 and then find 3 open bracket f of t close bracket. Okay, so step 1. Anywhere I see a t, I'm going to plug in a 4 and then I'm going to solve. I'm going to rewrite my problem to begin with. 2t cubed. Anywhere I see a t, I'm going to put a 4. So 2 times 4 cubed, which means 4 times 4 times 4. Notice I have, <laughs> notice I have 3 4s there. Okay, 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 
four is four, twenty four, sixty four. So two times sixty four, and then times two is eight, is a hundred and twenty eight. So f of four equals one twenty eight. Now let's go over here. Kind of interesting. Rewrite my problem, meaning this problem right here. 2t cubed. Inside parentheses. Anywhere I see a... Is that supposed to be a t? Yep. Anywhere I see a t, I'm going to plug in a t. Guess what? The t is already there. Okay. So... Now that this is f of t is done, I'm left with multiplying everything by 3. So 3 times 2 is 6t cubed. You're only multiplying your numbers. And you are done. Oh my gosh, you're done. I like those. Those are fun. Now, I want to take a look at one more example. If I have f of x equals 4x minus 5, and I have over here g of x equals x squared plus 1, and my problem says f of 2. Well, which equation are you going to use? You're going to match the f with the f, and anywhere you see an x, you're going to plug in a 2. So you'd say 4 times 2 minus 5, 8 minus 5 is 3. Okay. So let's take a look at number 2. F of, that's not C, that's a 3. F of C. Guess what? Your F, you're going to use the same problem. Equals 4X minus 5. Anywhere I see an X, I'm going to put a C. So my problem is 4C minus 5. And I'm done. The next one, number three, f x plus five. It's inside the parentheses. Whatever's inside the parentheses, that's what you're going to plug in for x. You're going to solve f with f of x, and f of x says four x minus five. Whatever's inside the parentheses, you're going to substitute in for your x. So instead of writing x, you're going to write x plus 5 minus 5. Now you need to use the distributive property. 4 times x is 4x plus 4 times 5 is 20 minus 5. Do I have any other x's? Nope. So I'm going to leave 4x. And then 20 minus 5 is a positive 15. Well, why do you write that g of x equals x squared plus 1? The reason I wrote it is because guess what? What if I said to you on question number 4, g of 3n? Oh. Uh, this has a G, that has a G, so I'm going to use this problem. And anywhere I see an X, I'm going to plug in 3N. So I'm going to rewrite X squared plus 1, which is I got right up here. And anywhere I see an X, I'm going to write a 3N. Don't forget the squared. 3 squared, or 3 times 3 is 9 n squared is simply n squared plus 1. 
these are not like terms, so I can't combine them, so I am done. Let's try another one. One more. That's how about g of t mi minus 4. Here's the g. There's the g. Whatever's inside the parentheses, I'm going to plug in for x, and then I'm going to subtract 4. So I'm going to use equals x squared plus 1. So instead of an x, I'm going to put a t. t squared plus 1 minus 4 goes on the outside. And there's nothing to combine. t squared inside, so I'm going to say plus 1 minus 4. And t squared, what's a positive 1 and negative 4? That would be a negative 3. I'm done. Very, very good.